Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Matt and Pastor Becky here for another exciting episode of Dear Revs. And today's question is, why are there so many different versions of the Bible? And if you've been to a local bookstore, whether a Christian bookstore or Barnes & Noble, for example, and you go to the Bible section, it's going to look a lot like alphabet soup. You're going to see a lot of initials like KJV, NRSV, NIV, C-E-V, C-E-B, B-L-T, B-L-T, there is no B-L-T, but there is an N-L-T. So a lot of Christians put a lot of energy into their translation of the Bible. Some people will argue about what the authoritative translation is or what the best uh, version of the Bible is. And we believe that the Bible is the Word of God, and rightly so. And so there's a lot of energy that is put into coming up with the best translation as possible. You may have seen a bumper sticker that says, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. Well, if you are a biblical scholar and you've gone down the rabbit hole of original languages and textual variants, you might wonder, well, which version of the Bible says what? And the reason we have so many different versions of the Bible in English is because the Bible wasn't written in English. It was written in Hebrew for the Old Testament and Greek for the New Testament. And if you look at the original Hebrew and Greek texts, they all don't even necessarily use the same Greek and Hebrew words. So, for example, if you looked at ancient manuscripts of Isaiah, you might see different Hebrew words being used in different order, and the same way with Greek manuscripts for the for the Gospels, for example. So when we take the Bible from the original languages and try to put it in English, we have to do two things. We have to first translate the words, but we also need to interpret the words. If you've ever studied a language other than English, you'd be familiar with this process. When you're taking words in English, for example, and putting them into Spanish, I was a Spanish major in college, it's not a direct translation. There are words in English that there is no equivalent for in Spanish and vice versa. Every language is its own vision of life and culture, and that's really fascinating and really cool. And the same is true for ancient biblical languages of Hebrew, of Greek, and Aramaic. And so you can't quite render them into English the exact same way as the original languages. So if you really, really want to understand the Bible in its original languages, you would need to devote years of your life to learning ancient Hebrew and Koine Greek, studying them, reading all kinds of texts so you know how words were used thousands of years ago and how you best can translate them and interpret them into context today. If you don't have years of your life to dedicate to studying original biblical languages, Fortunately, there are people who have chosen to do that with their lives, and we are so grateful for them, and they're the ones who come up with our Bible translations. Yes. Two of the most popular Bible translations you may have come across are the NRSV and the NIV. The NRSV stands for the New Revised Standard Version, and it was done um, at the instruction of the National Council of Churches. And the National Council of Churches intended the NRSV translation to be a very multi-purpose translation. They wanted it for devotional reading, they wanted it for liturgical reading, that is reading in church, and they also wanted it for scholarly study and reading. So there were a lot of needs that it needed to stand up to. They also translated it in such a way that it would have a broad appeal to the theological and denominational spectrum, all the way from more liberal Christians to more conservative Christians. And they finally, they translated the NRSV, the N part of that, the new part of that, uh, to be gender inclusive. Meaning that the literal Greek and Hebrew words might say man, meaning human or people in general. So rather than literally translate it as man, the NRSV chose to translate those words as people or humans. The NR. NIV was done by the International Bible Society, and it stood for the New International Version. It was a group of scholars from both the United States, Great Britain, and New Zealand, a lot of English-speaking countries, and they aimed to update the Bible from the King James Version in the 1970s to a more readable version. 
The NIV has a little more conservative bent to it and it is preferred a lot by the more evangelical churches at times. And one of the newer translations that's currently my favorite is the Common English Bible. And folks, at one, you see this a lot. Our scriptures have CEB next to them. That came out in 2011, and it was a new translation of the original languages put together by a diverse group of scholars from all over the world, from the United States, from all kinds of Christian traditions. One thing I love about the CEB is its readability. They really work with reading specialists to try to make it as comprehensive and understandable as possible, as fluid as we speak in English right now. One of the goals of the Common English Translation was to write it at about the same level as a USA Today newspaper. And if you're curious about what level that is, it's about a seventh grade reading level. Interestingly enough, the NIV is at that level and the NRSV is at an 11th grade reading level. If you want to know more about these translations, about the reading level of whatever translation you're using, or about whatever your favorite translation is, you can fall down the rabbit hole online, find out the scholars who were involved, some of the translation project's goals, just put into a search engine, Google whatever translation of the Bible you're using, and then if you discover something really cool and it's not one of these three we talked about, share it with us. We'd love to know what you discover about your favorite translations of the Bible. This big question about which, what are the differences of the versions of the Bible, we have to take in two episodes. So part two on this is next week, where we'll talk about what's the difference between a women's devotional Bible and a study Bible and a kid's Bible. And also Matt and I will reveal what we think is the best version of the Bible. Maybe we'll agree, maybe we won't. So we hope that you stay tuned for next week's episode. And in the meantime, we hope that you Get out your Bibles, enjoy reading them, read something that you haven't read for a while, and take care and be well, friends. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless.